All right. Welcome to the Justin McDonald Show on this Friday night. Uh, it's 9 o'clock. Do you know where your kitties are? <laughs> Uh, I know where my kitties are, and, uh, you know, we're just kind of getting things rolling. We're on location yet again at the bunker. Um, we had some studio issues over the week. I don't know if anybody else was affected by the power outage, but we were completely affected by this power outage going on. And let me tell you, we were down for a whole week at our studio out in Portland, so we're glad to to be back on. And we'll be back in action tomorrow for Channel Weird with Clyde Lewis at 1 o'clock Pacific time. Um, we look forward to that. And joining me on the Friday evening program, um, I have two good friends. Uh, we're having a little bit of connection issue with one of our guests, uh, but that's okay. We'll get to it here uh, in just a moment. But tonight uh, we have our good friend Michael Fox from the 420 Moving Company. That's the guy you can't see at the moment. Um, and then we also have Ron Patton, executive editor of Paranoia Magazine and executive director of Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis and, of course, Channel Weird. Which is, hey, on hey. Talk, which is on Talk Cafe CBS. Welcome, guys. How are you doing? Thank you very much. Doing fine. I'm working tonight, actually. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. Michael, I know we can't <laughs> really see you, but we can hear you. How are you, my friend? Well, you guys are very lucky then. If you can't see me, that's half the uh, problem having to talk to me. But yes, I can hear you guys clearly, and I'm a huge fan of what you guys both do. So thank you for having me on the show. Well, I really wish we could see you. I'm really bumming that we're having some uh, connectivity issues um, for this uh, third call in here tonight. But um, let me just start by saying that, you know, we, we've we known each other for a long time, Mike. And um, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this project uh, that we're doing now with TalkCast PDX and TalkCastPDX.com, excuse me. Um, you know, we're just excited to be uh, doing this. But you're the one that introduced me to the cats that I'm working with. And I'll be forever grateful to you for that because uh, they're a couple of wonderful guys. Well, I want to have that uh, in, um, in in writing then because if it goes bad, you know, I don't want to take the blame. No, just kidding. You you're in, uh, <laughs> you guys are all in great hands. I was so excited to see you guys with uh, with David Bentley and uh, also David. You know, uh, I, I've been a fan of Killer Dave and those guys and uh, all of them. I mean, everybody you're working with over there is really solid people and they're they're professionals you know and first and foremost they're good people and so it was such a and you're an amazing guy so it was great it's great to see kind of your transition from i mean you've been in radio so long and really been in Oof. advertising marketing in the in the cannabis side of it so it was really cool yeah. to see you you know yeah oh we lost michael oh i knew that might oh. happen well that's that's too bad oh, michael, well. michael fox with the 420 moving company maybe he can join us back here in a few minutes that's a that's the perils of live streaming programs is um you know it just kind of happens and uh maybe we'll get michael back here in just a few moments and we'll we'll talk to him ron let's switch to you real quick all now, righty you are the executive editor of paranoia magazine and of course you produce you're the executive producer for ground zero with clyde lewis which is heard everywhere it's all over the country mm -hmm. all over the world basically that's true tell me a little bit yeah. about Paran paranoia magazine tell me about that real quick i don't know too much about that um, yeah, well, quite... actually, yeah, uh, Paranoia Magazine actually started in 1992 uh, by a couple of conspiracy geeks, uh, Joan D'Arc and Al Hidel, and uh, it was sort of an avant-garde sort of uh, project, and, uh, you know, it was a period of time where they had the Oklahoma City bombing, um, and Waco, and it kind of really took off, actually. A lot of it's sort of a fringe conspiracy. Some of it's good, pretty good investigative reporting. But uh, they were able to actually get the magazine in uh, Barnes & Noble, Borders, and also Tower Records when it was uh, up and running. And, I love Tower uh, Records. I worked there for a while in my life. Yeah. So, I mean, it was considered fringe, but it was pretty popular. And it's about the time, too, when the X-Files came out. So uh, I just happened to uh, write for them back in the uh, mid to late 90s. I used to write mind control articles. And uh, finally, in uh, about 2011, uh, Joan and Al were tired of uh, the publishing business. And so they asked me if I wanted to take it over. And so mm -hmm. I bought them out and I was living in Olympia, Washington at the time. And uh, I decided I wanted to go to sunnier location. So I, I headed down to uh, San Diego 
and so that's where I published Paranoia for about uh, about three years. Hmm. And then uh, my good friend Clyde Lewis gave me a call and said, hey, buddy, what are you doing? I'm going just kicking back in the sun. I'm at the beach. You know, what do you want? Surfing, bro. Surfing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, uh, well, my producer left abruptly and was wondering if you want to come up here and, you know, take her place. And I go, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. you know it, i actually was helping out um clyde actually paranoia used to be his favorite magazine too oh really? and that's okay. how that's how we hooked up and so i was helping his producer at the time getting guests on the show because i had a lot of connections sure sure and so uh you know i kind of begrudgingly came up here i mean i, I wanted to be the producer but i actually told clyde you know what we can do things remotely, right? I can stay in San Diego and be your producer. And he goes, no, it doesn't work that way. Oh. So I came up here in you know June of 2015 and uh, I'm still here. I'm still his producer and we're branching out into multimedia projects and uh, things are going quite well. Yeah, you guys have a lot happening now. Now you recently changed the affiliates in Portland and and that's a, a good thing for you guys. And um, mm -hmm. how is that transition going? How, how are things uh, now? Are you settled into your new digs and everything's working all right? Yeah. Well, it's it's kind of weird. Um, we're the only ones here. <laughs> uh, Clyde, Wes, and I. And so it's like, you know, we got the whole radio station to ourselves. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very relaxed atmosphere. And uh, they're... People here are very accommodating, and uh, you know, I think um, our the previous place we worked, uh, Clyde was there for about ten years, and it just ran its course. And yep. so, you know, all good things come to an end, and so now we're starting a, a new adventure here at the KPAM Studios in Milwaukee, Oregon. And uh, those are some pretty heritage call letters too. Those have been around for a long time. Oh, they have? Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah we're on AM radio now. now. So, you know, it's yeah. a little bit different. But, uh, you know, we still have our affiliates. We have about 175 uh, across the country. And uh, great. so about a month or two ago, we found out we're rated number four on the Internet as far as uh, streaming talk shows. Hmm. And uh, That's interesting. so we're Was that gradually on, uh, moving up. Was it on TalkStream Live? Uh, TalkStream Live and uh, RadioOnline.com, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, the, uh, I know a lot about TalkStream Live. I think Michael's trying to join us back into the show. Uh, um, Michael, can you hear us? Uh, we still can't see you, but uh, can you hear us? I, I I hear you guys loud and clear. That blows me away. Uh, I thought you guys would be number two. No, <laughs> just, I mean, uh, honestly, uh, well, I'm not well, there he is. Show. He's peeking. He's peeking I through the blinders there. <laughs> if you guys can hear me, like uh, like I said, I, I really like what you guys are doing with that show. It's uh, I, I'm a rarity that you get me to actually listen to a lot of shows. And it's one of the ones Justin turned me on to it. Uh, I knew who he was. I knew, you know, the format of the show, but I really wasn't a fan or really even listening. And Justin got me to listen. And the show is it's it's fascinating. Uh, it really is. No bullshit. It's like it's a really well done show. And he's a he's a hell of a host of it. So well done. Yeah, and you know the interesting thing is the uh, within the top five, the other four radio hosts. Well, Rush Limbaugh was number one, and he died yeah. a couple of days ago. But they were all you know political, uh, conservative talk shows, and we're the oddball show. We're sort of the conspiracy, paranormal type show that somehow made our way in there. And uh, you know we're ahead of uh, George Norrie from Coast to Coast. Uh, Alex Jones, uh, Dave Ramsey, Glenn Beck, you know, those are a lot of big name folks. So let's talk about Rush Limbaugh for a moment. Um, you know, whether you love him or hate him, and you know, I think it's probably uh, not split down the middle for most of them. It's probably like 70, 30, you know, you know, from yeah. love to hate, you know. Um, but no matter what, what you think of the guy, he did pretty much save am radio from the deathbed that it was inevitable at that point in time in this country um, mm -hmm. 
he did pull it out of the muck and mire. It did make uh, talk radio go the wrong way, I feel. It's like, you know, all we need is more angry white men on the radio screaming and pounding on their chests about how everything's bad and, you know, there's only one way to do things and so on and so <laughs> forth. But the fact is, is that the guy did save and kill talk radio, I feel like, all at the same time. Um, what do you, Michael, what do you think about the guy? You you summed it up pretty much there. I mean, uh, I, I I don't like to dis- disparage anyone, honestly. Like especially speak uh, poorly or ill of the dead. But with Rush, it's it, it, you know like watching like him playing Dion Warwick every time somebody died of AIDS or somebody passed away from just an atrocious and dis- I mean like, just a hard way to go uh, and and to chair you know to celebrate that. And I. You know, as much as I want to dance on the guy's grave at times, I don't I don't want to be you know, I don't want to be what he was. So I'm going to try to choose a higher road and say, you know, what yeah. he did pioneered. Uh, literally, he pulled AM radio out of the gutter uh, of, of, uh, <laughs> yeah. of advertising, really. Yeah. I mean, and I don't think he helped AM radio at all. I always loved AM because of the the, the weirdness uh. that I AM radio and he he. Yeah. Made and I think that that's as much as I want to say about Rush. But the the new guys out, you know, I I, I don't think uh, we're losing you a little bit. That's there, why I love uh, seeing you guys sitting at fourth overall. Is really I, because Rush is gone. I mean, yeah, talk. And I think that you guys have an opportunity to deliver fun, factual, funny, off the wall stuff and everything else, and still do, without the without the you know bitterness and the uh, divisiveness and the uh, and really, the lies and the craziness lo- is what it's like. At the end, <laughs> that stuff was. Uh, we're we're, we're losing you a little bit, Mike. Uh, it's <laughs> um, um, he, he just kind of uh, was dropping out a little bit there. Um, uh, w- let's try one more time, Mike. Oh. Sorry, Mike. We're we were losing you a little bit. Um, just kind of uh, popping off uh, a little bit. You know, sometimes you know, right now especially after the winter storm we just had and, you know, PGE is trying to get things back up. I saw Comcast and Xfinity out working on lines too in certain places. And it doesn't surprise me we're having some, some issues tonight. I mean, we didn't have any issues last Friday night, but it hadn't really snowed yet. We were just getting ready for the big down dump. So um, we apologize for any technical issues tonight, people. So, We'll try to uh, just deal with it. As well, I know as the as internet's as really glitchy tonight. Mm. So, can you get on the Ouija there. board? Can you get on the Ouija board over there, Ron, and see what's going on? And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have it handy, unfortunately. All all that stuff we had at the old studio, most of it's in my garage right now. <laughs> A lot of activity going on uh, in my garage. Yep. All the haunted yeah, dolls, yeah. you know, like uh, little oh, Dutch Creek. And uh, Uncle Merv the Perv and um, uh, Mr. Green the Alien. Yeah, they're all in my garage. Oh, my God. out. So you got to start a museum. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's Actually, that's you know what we're going to be doing, uh, Michael and Justin? We're planning yeah. on um, – there's a place, there's a tattoo place here in uh, Milwaukee where they said uh, once uh, COVID-19 regula- uh, restrictions – ease up a little bit we can use part of his facility to create a um uh conspiracy or a, a museum of conspiracy and Ooh. so we're going to uh, call it the conspiracy zone so <laughs> oh, yeah conspiracy zone i come get yeah, a tattoo so. and learn about uh, some there you go be cool thing get a get know. a ground zero ta- i think i'm going to get a ground zero tattoo <laughs> i'm going to be the uh, in, the initiate Oh, that's awesome. Um, well, let's see here. We were, you know, I wanted to talk a little <laughs> bit more. I wanted to talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, the state of talk radio because of Rush's passing. And, and, is that, and yeah, I mean, uh, I think. spot right when you're walking, you can see. Uh, I can barely hear you, Michael. I oh, uh, I think we just lost him again. Um, oh, shit. Well, that happens, man. You got to be ready on your toes, ready to pivot on this game <laughs> of <laughs> live streaming fun. But look, look, just talking about Rush again real quick, uh, you know, radio. I got into talk radio around 1997, 98. Um, I started a 
program a station in Juneau, Alaska. We actually were once, we were like a music station and we were an AM station. And then we decided to just blow out all the music and just go all talk and stuff. So we had Rush and we had some other great talk shows like uh, Dr. Laura. And then we had uh, some financial uh, hosts, uh, Bruce Williams, I believe. And we had Jim Bohannon and we had all these different great talk shows, but they were really at that time were really like variety type shows. It wasn't all conservative. You know, we had a couple of conservative people, but then we had some people that were, you know, didn't wear their politics on their sleeves and talked about all issues and things. Hold up. I'm sorry. I got to get to a oh, couple of calls. He's working. Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Ron. We'll go ahead and uh, meet <laughs> okay, you off there thanks. for a minute. Then, and uh, we'll let Ron work for a moment. But getting back to Rush and talk radio, Rush really did. He broke barriers. He did all those things. He did instill some hate and really, you know, I wonder how much of it was shtick and how much of it was real. You know what I mean? Um, let's see if we can get Michael back while we're waiting on Ron. Uh, Michael, are you still there? Can you hear me? Me again. Okay. Well, it's, uh, we're just, uh, Ron had to, to, to work a little bit. <laughs> he just joined us from their studio tonight. So he had to step out for a second and, our connection has been very poor tonight on and off, but yeah. we're going back to rush. And I was talking about how, you know, he did instill hate. He did a lot of things, but I was wondering personally, how much of it was shtick and how much of it was real, you know, cause people, oh, I mean, will, do, in reality, people in, will do crazy reality, things for money, you know, reality, you know, the, I mean, I'm losing you a little bit, man. It's really in reality. Tonight. I think it, most of us, Yeah, I'm losing you, Michael. I'm sorry. We're having all kinds of uh, technical issues tonight, and it's just uh, it's a pain in the butt when we get all these things going on like this, and we we have problems. And I lost Michael there, and then now uh, Ron's working, of course, and <laughs> we're just kind of chugging along here. But back to Rush, shtick or was it real? You know, I I would say it would probably started out as somewhat sticky. And then when the money started to roll in and people started to jump on board, he probably said, hey, you know, the money's pretty good. I'll never be able to go back <laughs> to being uh, whatever I was before. So uh, it's one of those things where I think that maybe, just maybe, just maybe, um, he was, uh, we're trying to, Michael, you still there? I'll try again. Boy, we're having so many problems tonight. Uh, well, we're going to get Michael in the studio this week and we'll forget that the pain and misery of this Friday night ever happened <laughs> to some degree. Oh my goodness. Um, but we're waiting for Ron Patton from, uh, ground zero with Clyde Lewis. They're actually doing their show live. And so, um, Ron's back. Hey, Ron, you're back. You're back. You're back. Um, yep. I'm multitasking. Before, <laughs> before we were, uh, we've had so many technical problems and I'm just kind of juggling balls in the air to keep things going. But I was mentioning that rush was rush and he did instill hate. He did all these things, but I was wondering how much of it was shtick and how much of it was real, you know, because sometimes people will create personas for themselves on the radio to get an audience, you know, uh, they feel more comfortable playing a character I always thought Rush might, you know, when I first started listening to him, this guy is quite the character, you know, and um, I wonder how much he really believes of the shit that he's saying and how much of it right. that he doesn't. Um, I never met the guy, never, you know, but I'm just, I just always wonder if some night, you know, if he went home at night and, and lit up the bong and looked at porn and, you know, talked bad about right. everybody. I, I wonder if he did that. I think he's somewhere in the middle, actually. I don't think he's quite as conservative or wasn't quite as conservative as most people think he was. Yeah. And uh, I, he just found the formula, basically, as far as what people wanted to hear, right? It wasn't necessarily all he said was truth, but he had he had a knack of being able to make people feel like, you know, they're not hurt or whatever, and uh, this is what's going on. So, you know, it, it's just, uh, really, it's just another form of propaganda. It's just manipulating facts to be able to 
get people riled up. And so that's why they wanted to, they were so intrigued about the show and man, what's this guy going to say next, you know? And they knew that probably a lot of the stuff he said was true. And then you have the real zealots, right? That just had to listen all the time because they felt whatever he was saying was truthful. And then, you know, you can take another extreme like Alex Jones. He just took it to the next level, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. you know, marketing is everything. And these guys are made a lot of money in the radio business. A lot of money. We're talking gobs of money. Mm -hmm. Not only not only Rush, but uh, I mean, that set the way for contracts for guys like Stern and other guys, yeah. who, you know, Savage, Levin, yeah, all those guys. Savage, all of them, all of them. Yeah, they all make tons of do re me off of mm -hmm. uh, just stirring the pot. You know, that's what they do. They stir the yeah. pot. And yep. sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. But uh, but yeah, like uh, Howard, Howard Stern was at the other end of the spectrum, sort of, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, but he was very controversial and, you know, controversy sells. So again, they, he, whether, whether he was, um, cognitive or it was just by accident, it worked, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. so I think, what was the guy's name? Roy Masters. He was a, a programming, uh, director or whatever, grabbed yeah, a hold Roy of him. Masters. And, yep, yeah. That's right. And so he said, you're going to do well and, uh, you know, backed them up and got them a lot of radio stations across the country. And, you know, the rest is history. Yeah. You know, um, the one thing that with Rush was, is that I always liked his parodies and some of the uh -huh. wackier things he did. I never really liked his show per se, but I liked the, I think his parodies and some of the funny things he'd do. Uh, that was like radio stuff for me, and then you know he he inspired a lot of knockoffs, you know, like oh yeah, guys like Rusty Rusty Humphreys and Sean Hannity and some of these guys, you know, uh -huh. kind of like mini mini Rush Limbaugh's to some degree, right? Um, but you know, I always liked how original he was and how he would do real radio stuff on his show, you know, like bits uh -huh. and parody songs and things like that. I always dug that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't really dig his point of view in life uh, for the most part. Uh, um, but I did really uh, appreciate what he did for the craft uh, as far as radio yep. goes. Um, I did appreciate that. Speaking of radio, um, you know, you're going to be uh, in studio tomorrow with Clyde, Channel Weird. Who are you guys going to have on tomorrow? We have a good friend of mine by the name of Joe Beal. Boy, there's he more is, problems. Uh, he is the uh, owner of Microcosm Publishing. They're an independent publisher over in North Portland, and he's sort of like the godfather of uh, zines here in the Northwest. Uh, he makes quite a few zines and really into independent publishing or DIY publishing. And uh, he also has a uh, series of zines dealing with uh, the CIA's dirty deeds. So it'll, it'll be a very interesting discussion tomorrow. The CIA's Dirty Deeds. Yeah, well, I look forward to that. One o'clock Pacific time on TalkCastPDX.com. And then, of course, on all our video platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Periscope, and Twitch. And uh, you yeah, can catch yeah. it right at our website as well. Um, it'll lead you to the right spot. Well, you know, we've had a mire of technical problems tonight for the Internet. And I don't know why. We haven't had issues like this in quite a while. But um, You know what? We, we actually didn't. Uh, we were not going to do the show tonight because of internet problems and all of a sudden it came back on so huh. yeah I, I think it's just kind of across the board you know there's been you know a lot of uh power lines down because of the ice storm and i still think yeah. they're trying to you know get things ramped up with the uh the power grid and the infrastructure here well i still wanted to attempt to do a show tonight because like i always say the show must go on and if uh if you can bear with me for a few moments, I would like to do my favorite memes and just recap three little memes that I liked uh, this past week that were, I don't know, they were pretty cute little memes. And uh, we like to do this segment, which is called My Favorite Memes. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. My favorite memes. Uh, we're going to go with number one meme that we thought was the funniest this week. You know, I just I scour the Internet and I look for stupid and insane shit, basically stuff that's just kind of funny. And this meme caught my eye right here. A couple of old schooly ladies playing cards. And the one says, do you have any fucks? And she says back to her, go fish. <laughs> so, I mean, it just kind of plays into the whole thing. Uh, it's one of my favorite memes that I've seen this week. Uh, it's just one of those things. Another meme that I saw that made me laugh out loud. I don't know if it's just because uh, maybe I had a little too much uh, toki toki or something like that, <laughs> that matter. Uh, but this Bacalolo. one was funny. <laughs> it's Bacalolo. This one was pretty funny. It's when you cut down a tree in Italy. <laughs> it looks like a big salami instead of like trees. I laughed for probably five minutes after I saw this. Uh, movie, which is pretty silly, but when you cut a tree down in Italy, Italy, you get salami. So, and then the final meme from my favorite memes this week was this one, and I've actually done this in college. Apparently, you can reheat pizza by turning your toaster on its side, and then of course the proverbial "You're welcome." But I have done this: turn the toaster upside down, put the slices in there. Turn the toaster on. And let me tell you, it works amazingly well. So uh, if you get a chance. And it's safe. Yeah, yeah. And if you get a chance uh, and you have an extra four-stack to toaster laying around, try that. So, well, uh, enough stumbling and bumbling for tonight. I think we're going to end the program since we've had so many technical problems. Before I do go, I want to remind people that Citizen Smith is going to be heading across America. Um, he's going to be leaving Boston and traveling to Portland it's going to be a quite interesting and quite fun. He's going to talk with people from all walks of life and just have himself a, a great time driving across the country. Of course, doing all the COVID restrictions and everything he has to do. But uh, you can watch the live streams and then listen to his podcast at TalkCast PDX. Citizen Smith goes across America. It's going to be pretty nice. Um, and uh, it looks like Michael's trying to bump back into the show one more time. Let's try to see if he's available, if we can see him now. Michael, we still can't see him, my friend. I see his name, though. I see his name, but I can't hear him or see <laughs> That's him. a good thing. You don't see my name, but I can see his name. Yeah, I can hear him and see him. I can't see him. I, I can't hear him either now. He's in the uh, darkness. He's in the void. Oh, there he is a little bit. I Come out, Michael. Uh, Come to the light. Come it's to a, the yeah, light. Yeah, Come into the light. I come into the light. I'm telling you, I'm uh, this is that a toilet? Spaceship. I what got the hell? caught up. In... <laughs> what is that? It's oh, the uh, it's the alien interference. It's coming oh. from your studio. Get right. On. Yeah, it's the Martians. They know that we landed there, and they're pissed the off. The robots. Here. It's the robots. <laughs> well, Michael, we're just going to end the show. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for uh, attempting to come on the program. Uh, and uh, we'll get you in the studio this week, okay? All right, we lost him again. We can't hear him. Hey, I really uh, like Michael in uh, Back to the Future. That was great. <laughs> I know. That's Michael W. Fox, not Michael J. Oh, oh well. <laughs> um, one more thing before I go tonight, just because it's just been a train wreck and it's been fun. Uh, don't miss uh, – I'm doing another little podcast uh, on our sister station, if you will over on Canacast 420, um, doing what they call the quick hit. And it's the four-minute and 20-second interview. Uh, it's under my pseudonym, J.D. McD, but uh, we talk to all of our friends in the cannabis industry. But the interview is only four minutes and 20 seconds long, and so it doesn't take long to listen. So spin the hell out of it. Go listen to it. The first two episodes are at Canacast420.com right now. And TalkCast PDX. I can't be happier the way things are starting to go. We, we have a lot of great Good. shows on. We have Stop, Listen, Shoot with Shannon Monahan. We got Half Cast with Ray Lane coming on. Of course, Citizen Smith doing his thing. Teaming with Tips with Jeff Lowenfels. Channel Weird with Clyde. And uh, we got a, a bunch more coming. So uh, things are going to start happening for us, and we're pretty excited for it. And we're glad to have Clyde and Ron and yourself uh, on board as well. So. We look forward to doing more stuff. Uh, you got any big plans uh, for the weekend besides hanging out at the Channel Weird Studios? I plan on uh, organizing that garage. <laughs> you know, like I said, we got a lot of Ground Zero stuff, some of my stuff. I have my son's stuff in there. And so uh, 
yeah, it, it's <laughs> time to organize. Oh, and also there's a lot of uh, tree debris Oof. thrown about, so I have to kind of clean that up as well. Oh, yeah. that's terrible. Well, um, I hope that all gets uh, taken care of for you, and uh, we'll we'll try this again when we have a better connection. Uh, hopefully, uh, next week. My show is going to start live streaming a couple days a week instead of Friday nights at nine. Good. So we're going to start doing our weekday show. We'll have that schedule out next week, but look for it. It should be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, we'll let you know when it's happening. So we'll have you. Sounds good. So we'll tell Clyde I said hi and uh, thanks for hanging out. Uh, I think we had like ten viewers uh, tonight, so the internet right just killed us tonight. So we're we're just gonna have to deal with it, right? You know that. Yeah, yeah, the man got us tonight. But Ron, thanks for uh, hanging out with me tonight, and thanks to Michael Fox as well. We want to thank him for stopping by. We didn't really get to chat with him too much, but uh, we'll get him in the studio as well. Um, cool. Until next time, everybody. Like I always say, peace. Mahalo.